Hi there, this is Grandmaster Jose Gonzalez, and today I'm going to be exploring one of the most aggressive and dynamic chess openings. Whether you are a beginner or an experienced player, the parry attack can be an important part of your chess repertoire. It, it helps you to avoid main theory and will be very likely that your op opponents get tricked by it. So, Let's get into it, but remember to stick till the end where I am going to reveal a tricky move order that will give you lots of points. So let's start. D4, Knight of 6, Knight of 3, G6. Your opponents can get to this position if they intend to play the King's Indian or the Grunfeld. And here, the normal d4 players would play c4, gaining some space. In the barry, we are going to play knight c3 with the immediate idea of playing e4. This can take the game into one e4 positions. For example, the, the pure defense after bishop g7, e4, d6, we are in the pure defense. And this is a perfectly playable defense, but sometimes your opponent would play the King's Indian and perhaps the Sicilian against e4. So if you manage to take them into this position, you already have something in your advantage. So uh, this is a tricky move order that would be really annoying for a lot of people. So the, the right move is playing right away d5, avoiding e4, and then after bishop f4, we get to the barrier attack. After bishop d7, now we have three variations. And today I'm going to start covering one of the most aggressive, that is e3, but there are two other lines. For, ex for example, queen d2, followed by bishop h6, and long castle is also a very nice one. And knight b5 is even played at the very top of the, of the elite. Knight a6, they force the knight to a to a6, e3, and we get a normal game. But okay, I will tell about uh, explain it in some other video because today I'm going to focus on e3. After e3, black castles, and we play bishop e2. Apparently, we're doing we are, we're just developing our pieces, but we have a hidden resource, a hidden idea. For example, after b6, that is the game, I will show you a game from Mark Hebden against Birnboim, Nathan, um, where white continued with 95, bishop b7, and h4. This is the hidden idea of the Barry. We, we played, apparently, we're just developing our pieces, but all of a sudden, we're trying to use the rook on h1 to open our opponent's king, king side and castle. So now there are several ideas for, for black. The game continues with h6. The other possible move is h5, but after g4, we, we have a very nice position. Then the, the king side is getting open and our pieces will, will destroy his king. After knight takes g4, knight h5, for example, it seems to be blocking the king side, but simply knight h6. And black is absolutely lost, hopeless position for black. So h5, we will play g5, g4, and it's really difficult for black to stop the opening of this, of the king side. Other alternative is knight bd7, and there we're just simply continuing with h5. And we are doing really, really well. Our plan might be queen d2, castle, f3, g4, and we are all in in the king's side without sacrificing anything so far. So, after h4, black continued with h6, h5, now we're ready to open the, the file, the h file, g, g5 trying to block, and here the game took a very 
beautiful, oh, not very beautiful, but very effective turn. Bishop takes g5, h takes g5, and h6. Now we're regaining the bishop, but it went away, and this is the idea. We play, we simply play h7, and if black takes it, it's absolutely busted. For example, knight takes h5, h7, sorry, bishop d3, even, even bishop a6 can be considered. We are capturing, and if they capture our bishop, well, then we simply come to h5. And this is it. There is no way to avoid mate. So, a tricky little check. Then black came to g7. We are a piece down, but black's position is really... Mm, no, lacks co coordination, and we can bring our pieces to the king side by bishop d3, queen f3, and queen f5. Bishop a6, queen f3, bishop takes d3, c takes d3. Now, queen f5 is coming, queen g3 is coming. It's a complete uh, positional domination, and uh, the rook will be able to come very soon after king e2 or long castle. Queen d6, queen f5, rook d8, giving f8 to the king, queen takes g5, king f8, and king d2. White is prepared to bring both rooks, here or here, and then the other rook. A6, avoiding a possible knight b5. Rook h6. Now the threat of rook takes f6 is there. For example, c5 will be answered by rook, ta rook takes. If e takes f6, queen d8, king e7, and queen f7 checkmate. Instead, black played knight bd7, rook h e1. Uh, rook a h1, sorry. King is queen e6. Rook 1 h4. Now, white has a hidden threat. For example, after c5, rook g4 will be winning because now queen g8 is thre threatened and there is very little black can do. Of course, taking will just simply lead to mate. And king e8, check, and then we grab the bishop and we are winning because this this pawn will most likely queen. So after knight takes e5, have them recapture the pawn, king e8, and finally recover his piece, getting a absolutely winning position. So the game lasted for a couple of more moves, king e7. Queen takes c7, rook d7, queen g3, and rook c8, and black resign. Yeah, his position is absolutely destroyed. The, the, the bishop can't move, the king is really exposed, so it's, it's no, no, no wonder he resigned. Rook d4 and rook d8 is in the way. So, okay, let's go to, to check a fantastic move order trick that I have used several times in my online games. Okay, and even one of my pupils use it in in a over-the-board game. The trick I'm talking about is when I play knight c3, if they play bishop g7, e4, and now instead of playing d6, they castle. We already said that after d6, we're in the pyrrhic. I will recommend something for white <clears throat> in a future video, but now if they castle, that is completely normal, looks a normal move and a possible continuation, but after e5, white gets a crushing advantage. Knight, knight e8, sorry, and <clears throat> h4. Uh, we, we are getting used to this idea, using the the fact that we didn't move the rook to open the h-file and attack uh, the enemy's king, the enemy king. 
So now, for example, H5 would, would seem rather normal because it, it stops G, G4, G4, and we would think that it's okay because it on, okay, it, we already got the G5 square, but in this position we can aim for something bigger by playing G4. After H takes G4, knight G5, and now we are recapturing, and we are all keep, uh, keep keeping with the idea of playing H5. Um, okay, the, the white, the black king is in deep trouble. So instead, after cast, after castle, E5, Knight E8, H4, H6, again H6, H5, G5, and we already know this idea. Knight takes g5, h takes g5, h6. Bishop h8, h7 again. And now things are even easier than in, in Mark's Heldon game. Queen h5, f6, and bishop d3. Black is absolutely hopeless. Queen d6 is coming. f5, or rook f7 is made in two. Queen g6 and queen g8, but now instead f5, queen takes g5, king f7, queen takes f5, knight f6, otherwise queen g6, knight f6, queen g6, and king g6, checkmate with bishop f5. So as you can see, this is a really tricky line with it seems very innocent. We, we wouldn't imagine that e5 would be so strong. So after 98, the strongest um, option for black would be to play d6, trying to counterattack in, in white center. But after h5, e takes d, um, d takes e5, h takes g6, h takes g6, bishop h6. Now we are simply planning to play queen d2 and bring the queen to h6 and the attack is terrible. Now after e takes d4, queen d2, oh sorry, I want to show a variation with bishop, bishop takes h6. In this way black avoids the king, the queen to get to h6 as the rook is here, e takes d4 and now Queen d2, taking advantage that the pawn can can take the knight because of the queen takes d8. Now, knight c6, and now the fantastic rook h8. King takes h8, queen h6, king d8, queen g5, knight g5, threatening bishop, queen h7 mate, knight f6, knight e8. Now, black has to face this threat. The only move is rook e8 and bishop c4. And, well, black is really under a severe pressure. e6, then castle, uh, followed by rook h1, and black is busted again. Instead, here, Knight e5 would be even worse because bishop takes f7, knight takes f7, and queen takes g6, followed by checkmate in one. So this is the first video on the Barry. If you liked it, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel so I can keep making these kind of videos. So I'll see you next time.